Hey, so happy to see you here. Have you ever wondered how to make your watercolor painting look more three-dimensional so it looks more interesting? Because in today's video, I'm going to show you a fun technique you can try out that does exactly that. I'll walk you through step by step while using two different examples. And by the way, if you're completely new to watercolors or just simply have questions about it, I created a free guide to watercolor supplies where I talk about everything that you need to know about watercolor paint, paper, and brushes so you can instantly get better at your art. You can find a link right below this video. Alright, let's get started. In the first painting, we are going to paint a sunset with a wheat field below. The first thing you want to do is to apply a thin layer of water all over your paper. You only want to make the paper slightly glossy so there shouldn't be any pools of water around the edges. This is going to give us more time to work on the painting. Next, load up your brush with an ochre color and start applying it to the upper part of the paper. And then distribute the paint in a circular motion towards the center. You want to keep the center empty and just make the paint blend towards it. This is going to be the sun. Distribute the rest of the paint to the other parts of the paper and now we can build up the intensity because watercolors look simply a lot more pale when dry. This time I'm going to use this rather warm yellow color and repeat the steps. To make sure you don't add too much water to your painting, you can use a tissue paper or a paper towel to soak up some of the excess water from your brush. Now to create depth, I went ahead and used my ochre color from the beginning and applied it right at the edges around a circle and blended it slightly into the yellow colors. You just want to create this transition between super light in the center and the dark colors around the edges. I find this wet and wet technique works the best on 100% cotton paper because it's so sturdy and it just simply can handle the water so much better than regular watercolor paper made out of cellulose. Again, if you want to learn more about it, make sure to download the free guide that I made just for you. Alright, now it's important that we continue painting while the paper is still wet, so we need to be quick. For the next color, I mixed ochre with a little bit of this red brown color to make the ochre color slightly warmer and darker. And then I applied the mixture right to the bottom of the paper, making the next layer look similar to a fence. Next, you want to start moving the paint upwards with a very light brush movement. As you can see, I just used the paint that is already on the paper and just move it upwards while creating lines in different sizes. And this is going to be the first row of the wheat field. Here it's important to not freak out because it might look totally weird to you and you might start questioning what you're doing. But everything that we're going to add to the wet paint will slightly melt together and that's exactly what you want to achieve. This is going to create a blurry effect so the field looks like it's out of focus. If you notice that your field just looks like a flat piece of paint, what you can do is you can lift off some of the paint with a clean damp brush. Now we can start adding some details. Here I'm going to use another shade of brown so I have a little bit of a contrast. So load up your brush with paint and draw a thin line upwards where you simply dab your brush to the sides to create these little dots to create the shapes in the leaf. And continue that with a few more leaves. Here it's important again that the paper and the paint are still wet so you want to work quickly. If the paper is already too dry, the paint will just sit on top without blending in. Next, I used even more of the brown color and repeated the steps. This time you want to create another row, but this time a lot shorter. So start at the very bottom and paint lines upwards while changing up their height again. So I added some very thin lines, some that are a little bit thicker and made sure that they all have different heights. I also sometimes just dabbed on some paint to create subtle leaves that look through the background. You also want to leave out some areas so you don't simply color everything darker, the other row should still look through. And to make it look more interesting, you can also make the leaves look into different directions. This way everything will look more natural. Alright, now we can finally let this painting dry before we can move on to adding more details. For the second painting, you also want to start by applying a thin layer of water all over the paper. Make sure it's just glossy, not full of water that creates pools. Then load up your brush with yellow paint and then apply it to the top of the paper and blend it slightly downwards. 
Next, I used red paint and mixed it with a little bit of yellow so it turns into orange and then blended it upwards starting slightly below the yellow color. Now this is going to be the base for the sunset. Clean your brush, dab off the excess water and start adding another layer of yellow paint the same way to intensify the color. As you can see, I now have a very bright yellow on top that turns into orange. Now we can work in even more red to intensify everything again. Here I started at the center and blended the red color by moving upwards into the yellow color. Again, you want to make sure you don't add too much water with your brush, so dab it off on a piece of tissue paper so you have more paint than water on your brush. Now I'm going to use this cool blue color and add it right below the sunset so I can slightly blend it in. This way we get a transition from orange to purple. Below this part is going to be the field that the sunset reflects on, so here you also want to add another layer of an orange color. Because I felt like the purple turned out way too pale and it will look even paler once dry, I decided to add a little bit more red on top and blend it into the sky so you can clearly see that it's purple. Here again, the key is to work quickly and to dab off any excess water from your brush. Otherwise, you will constantly add more water to the painting and it will just look patchy. Now to create the sun that's actually setting, we're going to use an easy trick. For that you only need a piece of tissue paper to use it to cover the end of a pen that should be flat or you can also use a small coin. And then wrap the end of the pen or the coin with the tissue paper. Now you only have to press it down above the purple paint to soak up the wet paint and then you will reveal the white paper below once you remove it. I also use my clean damp brush to lightly blend out the edges, this way we get this glowy effect around the sun. All right. Now for the lower part of the painting, I'm going to use a very bright mixture of green colored paint and apply it to the white space. Here we're going to paint another wheat field, but this time it's going to be green. And then I mixed a slightly darker version of that green using a little bit more blue and repeated the same steps as in the first painting. I simply added different lines here and there making sure they look into different directions. I also applied them around the horizon and in the field itself. I also applied a little bit of yellow paint on top just to create the yellow crops growing from these green leaves. Next, I mixed an even darker green and applied it to the lower part of the painting to create even more depth. Again, don't freak out, everything should just blend into each other. And to make sure you don't create a pool of paint, always dab off excess water on a tissue paper. Here I add the green lines to create shadows around the crops leaning towards the right, but of course you can paint it however you like. Also as you can see, since the sky is already drier than the field we're currently working on, the wet paint started to push away the dry paint. This is one of the versions of the typical cauliflower effect or backgrounds. This is why it's important to work quickly and keep the paper wet. I just took way too long to paint the field and it went back to the horizon so the water kinda built up. But don't panic, if that happens to you, you can always blend it out later. Alright, while this is drying, let's go back to the first painting. As you can see, since we painted wet and wet, everything we worked on looks rather blurry. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now we can paint everything that is in focus by using the wet on dry technique. Here we're going to paint a few additional leaves around the sun. Load up your brush with a brown color that is darker as the other colors and start drawing thin lines on the left and right side that lean towards the sun. As you can see, I leave out some space in between while drawing the line just to make it look more delicate. Then you can add detail to the leaves by dabbing the brush around the thin branches. If you need an idea how to paint them exactly, you can simply google that so you can use anything that you personally like. Repeat the steps with a few more leaves here and there. To make everything look a little bit more delicate, I also used a tissue paper to soak up some of the paint but only at a few areas so some lines are still darker than the rest. From here you can really play around and add even more lighter or darker lines wherever you feel like it's a little too empty. But you don't want to add too much or you cover everything that we just worked so hard on. Alright, let's move on to the second painting. 
The first thing I did, I painted the circle yellow so the sun doesn't look so white. And then I blended out this weird hard edge upwards and downwards so everything is slightly more seamless again. And to make sure that the backgrounds won't happen again, I used the glazing technique to add a thin layer of yellow paint to the lower half of the painting and to also make the green look a little bit warmer. And because I reactivated the paint a little bit, I could use that to add more details to the sky to create clouds and its shadows. And now we can add a few more details and we are done. This time I used an even darker shade of my brown color and added a few more leaves here and there to create another row in the field. Repeat the same with the second painting. Here I painted different types of leaves and branches. And to make everything look slightly more magical, I also used white gouache and sprinkled it all over the painting to create this white shimmer. And if you want, you can also mix the white gouache with your watercolors to make them opaque. Here I did that with my green and yellow color and created a few highlights in the field. And this is how it looks. Don't forget to download your free guide about watercolor supplies using the link down below. And for more ideas on what you can paint to improve your art, check out the videos right here. I really hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!